morning, fellow students and teachers, and welcome to today's chapel speech. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jade Zinn. I joined the Appleby community last September as a new boarding upper two student. And even though it has only been a bit over half a year, Appleby already felt like my second home. It is because of this warm community filled with intelligent and caring people, many of which who inspired me to stand here before you, that I wanted to share with you a very personal story. Bullying is not an uncommon thing, and most of us have encountered it somewhere along the past. Whether we're the, the bully or a bullied or the one who watched, everyone knows what it is. At least they should. If you really don't know, go watch the teen's TV show or just listen to the story I'm about to present. However, before I continue, I want everyone to keep in mind that I'm not only here to speak about my past, but rather what I've learned from this experience. These are the things that I'm actually grateful for, and they have played an important role in shaping who I am. Don't worry, I won't bore you with my story out of depression, but let me give you a quick summary. Growing up, I've always been the good girl, who was well-behaved, worked hard at school, and act very mature for her age. I was used to taking care of things on my own, not wanting to distract or cause any issue for my parents. When I was 11, my mom decided to move to Canada, as it had better education opportunity for me, and we settled down in Montreal. It was a big change for her, even with the help of my aunt, since being a single mother is never an easy task. So I learned not to take on responsibility and try my best not to complain, because I wanted to support her to the best of my abilities. At school, despite the fact that I spoke little English, I managed to make a ton of friends who I'm still in contact with today. After completing elementary school, we decided to move again. So our next stop was to the west of Canada, the Great Van City. In Vancouver, I studied at an old girls school. I joined the school in grade seven, which is the last year of elementary in BC, different from the Quebec system. At that time, everyone seems to have formed their own circle of friends, and moreover, I was the only new student. Therefore, I decided to join the volleyball team in hopes to make new friends. Out of some extraordinary luck, I was elected into the team without any experience, and that was when things changed for the worst. Because of my experience, nobody in the team would partner up with me in practice. Rumors goes around the school, and soon some people start giving me dirty looks. At that time, I didn't understand why, nor did I know the existence of bullying. So I innocently thought it was because of something I had done. You see, I wasn't physically bullied at the school, because that was against the school's policy. Instead, I was constantly left alone and looked down upon. I couldn't talk to my mom because I was worried that she would be concerned. I couldn't talk to my friends because I knew there was little they could do from so far away. I tried to talk to my advisor, but all she could tell me is that you're strong enough, Jade. You can solve this on your own. So I kept everything to myself, thinking that I was strong enough, and it was not a big deal. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't understand why I was treated that way when all I wanted was to be accepted. I thought maybe I'm not good enough, so I worked harder. Maybe I'm not doing something right, so I changed things. Or maybe I just can't be liked, so I stopped trying. Slowly, I became shy and quiet, afraid of others, and stayed alone. I also worked very hard constantly pushing myself to my limits and try to take the frustration and unspoken bitterness out of my mind, locking them away. But nothing could really help. I only became weaker and sicker as day passed. My hatred for the bully turned into the hatred for the school, and then into the fear of people. By the end of the first year, I started becoming physically ill with frequent stomach pain and headaches. My second year at the school was mainly composed of absent and half days. That's when my family finally realized that something had gone seriously wrong. I was then taken to doctors only to find out that I had a small ulcer in my upper stomach. The doctor suggested that emotional issue may have caused it, and that's when I finally decided to open up to my mom about the situation at school. She was devastated and took me to several different psychiatrists where I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder as well as depression. 
My psychiatrist suggests that I should drop out of school and spend more time with my mom to recover. And that's so, that's so what we did. She also warned us it may take up to two years before I can fully recover. But after only half a year of recovery, my mom and I decided to enroll me in my local public school as a part-time student where I achieve success. Now, standing here and thinking back on the event, I have to say that I'm actually grateful for the lesson that I've learned through the process. So I'd like to share some of my knowledge with you. First of all, I learned to maintain balance, the balance needed for our well-being, such as the balance between working hard and taking a break. You should know your own limits and when to challenge it, as well as to what degree. Going overboard all the time will not be beneficial for you, and this applies either ways, working or playing. Secondly, I try to be honest to yourself and to others. Have an open mindset and seek help even if you think you will be fine, because sometimes you may not be as strong as you think. And there are always ways a way to solve an issue. That brings me to my third point, which is finding someone you could trust and talk to when concerns arise. It doesn't matter if it's a teacher or a friend or just your parents. It needs to be somebody you could trust and be honest to, not pressure to have to wear a social mask for. The phrase finding someone doesn't mean looking for somebody new. It is more so looking at those around you. Trust is not to be built over a short period of time. You cannot just instantly trust someone with all your secrets. I know trusting may not be the easiest thing to do, but it's critical for our fundamental development. Some of you may have found this kind of connection already, and I must say, you're one of the lucky ones. Please treasure that relationship and be grateful for what you have, because once you lose it, it will be hard to build a new one. Another significant thing that I learned was not everyone could be your friend. Believe it or not, there are always going to be individuals that you cannot get along with. So you have to accept that and put on a positive attitude. Don't let the negative thoughts affect your state of mind and place a shade of gray over this beautiful world. It is essential for everyone to be conscious of your own state of mind and limit the amount of negative thoughts. Therefore, I want everyone to join me in a little practice. Please bow your heads. Close your eyes and ask yourself in silence, how am I feeling today? If an issue came to mind, recognize it and address it. Okay, now I would like everyone to open up your eyes and turn your attention back to me. Every day, taking a moment to address your feelings will make a significant difference on your emotional state. This will help you to detect any underlying feelings that you may be pushing away. Lastly, I want you to learn from your experience, just as I did. After all, life is a big lecture hall. We are here to learn lessons through our life in hopes of achieving something better. Don't give up, keep on fighting, because there is always gonna be hope. Everything will eventually come to an end. It is hard, I know. There were times in the past I wanted to put an end to the suffering. I ran away from the reality, from myself. I hated myself for my weakness. I hated my emotions. I was so busy hating and insulting myself that I forgot what my fundamental goal was, to be accepted. If you cannot accept yourself for being who you are, who will? Every single one of us is unique in our own ways, and that's what's beautiful about being who you are, because there is only one you. Please stand to sing hymn 418, Draw the Circle Wide.